Hey, good morning, Highland. It's so great to be here this morning, and I'm so glad that you're here together as we, as we have the privilege of opening God's Word together. It's my honor to, anytime I get the opportunity to break open the Word of uh, Life, uh, to share that with you, it's a, it's a high privilege. It's also my privilege to pinch hit for Pastor Mike this morning. Uh, as you heard last week, he had been exposed to COVID and uh, took a two-week quarantine, which is about to finish uh, back in the office, I think, on Monday. He'll be preaching here uh, uh, next Sunday, and uh, thank you for your prayers for him. Uh, and uh, so I get to pinch hit, and I'm, I'm grateful for that, although I have had this just recurring thought over these last couple of weeks. You guys know Pastor Mike pretty well, okay? Can you imagine Mike Fackler stuck at home in quarantine for two weeks? Whew. Not a pretty sight. Oh, is he watching this? Hi, Mike. Sorry. <laughs> But it's great to be here. Hey, what a week it has been. Did you guys know um, that there was an election here last, last week? Oh, my goodness. Okay, we'll talk about that in a second. But it's been a crazy, monumental week. For me, it was particularly monumental. I know you would never guess this in a million years, but I have to confess to be transparent and all that stuff. I celebrated on Thursday my 65th birthday. Okay, me and Medicare, here we go. Okay, we got all this stack of mail from, uh, from all these insurance companies, so nice to, to, but you know what, I'm not in despair this morning at all. I might be getting old, but I'm not over the hill. As a matter of fact, here's the, here's, here's the deal. Okay, all original parts, baby, right there. <laughs> but it has been a week. It has been a season. And as we, as we gather together this morning and and, and we try to get a grip on things that are taking place around us. We know that, that we are living in and operating in a, a season of uncertainty. The picture says uncertainty ahead, and that's true, but we're in it. And we find ourselves going, what in the world is going on? And God, where does this end? Where does this end up? How do we get through this? The election, we talked about that just a moment ago. My goodness, where does, where, what's, the, what's the ultimate outcome of that? And what are the, what are the consequences of a potential and very likely uh, change in government? Where's that end up? And all that we knew to be secure in some senses now is like, whoa, what now? And then there's the, the season, no, more than that, the time of, of deep unrest in our country. We haven't seen this in a long time, what we've seen over the last several months just anger and vengeance and frustration taken out on each other. Then there's the financial security or insecurity, I should say. Stock market ends up, but if we look in our own community, just with the result of the downturn from COVID in the oil industry, there may be some of you this morning that are wondering, where in the world is my next paycheck going to come from? I just don't know. And COVID. My goodness, how things have just seemingly, at least from our perspective, spun out of control even in the last week or two. The first wave that hit through, I don't know about you, but the first wave that came to, to Wyoming and to our community, I was kind of like, do you guys know anybody that has COVID or do you know? No, I don't, I don't. Well, not so this time. It's touching us all. It's touching our, our community. It's touching our homes. It's touching our church. God, how does this end? What happens here? And all of this, if we're honest with ourselves, just brings us with a, a great emotional drain. You know what I'm talking about. You felt it. I felt it. All this uncertainty. What now? And a reasonable question to ask. But you see, we're in a, in a, in a time where we're walking through a sea of unpredictability. But you know what? That's not where it ends. For there are some things that we can predict. There are some things that we do know. And despite this time of unrest and, and skepticism and mistrust and all of the things that just seem to be swirling around us, I want you to know there is some hope today. And I want you to hear that. I want you to feel it. I want you to experience it. Because while there's a lot around us that we do not know, there are some irrefutable truths that we do. Know this, my friends. God's got this. And God's got you. 
He's got me. He's not thrown by anything that's going around us today. Elections don't throw him off, bar, off track. Financial uh, dis, uh, uncertainty doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't concern him a bit in a sense, and he's the one who supplies all of our needs anyway. But here's a truth I want you to hear again and again and again this morning. God is faithful. He is faithful. Say that with me. He is faithful. Even in those seasons of uncertainty, the great hero of the faith, the Apostle Paul, never had a bed of roses in his life after he became a Christ follower, but he was one of the most effective evangelists for, for Jesus ever. And uh, there was a particular season in his life, though, that just threw him a curve, or at least so it may seem. He'd had his plans worked out. He knew which, which journey he wanted to take, where he wanted to preach, how, where he wanted to go. He'd sent a letter to the church at Rome saying, I'm gonna go to Spain first and I'm going to visit you. And all of the plans were worked out. But then it happened. Preaching one day in the synagogue in Jerusalem, a mob stormed the, stormed the, 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 the temple they were attempting to kill him because he had become a Christ follower and actually Paul was arrested not because he'd done anything wrong and the charges that were against him were totally fake news, if you would. <laughs> but uh, they arrested him to, to get him out of there for his, own, for his own safety. Should have been an open and shut thing. There was nothing to it. He should have been released the next day. But because of political infighting and, and maneuvering, Paul remained in a prison cell for two years. Totally innocent. After that two-year period of time, he'd had enough, and he, as his right as a Roman citizen, he had made an appeal to, to Caesar, so he was put on a ship to make a 2,000-mile journey to, to Rome, and you may remember the story partway into that trip. Uh, the, the, the ship was wrecked, and they had to spend the, the winter on the island of Malta, and by the time they finally got to Rome, there's another year of his life. What's going on here, God? He gets to Rome, ready to make his appeal to Caesar, and realizes there's a two-year backlog in cases. Wow. So he was allowed to live in, in his own home because the charges were so frivolous, but you know what, Paul? You have to do it at your own expense because you can't work five years of uncertainty. God, this was not my plan. What's next? What's next? And to you and to me this morning, we may be looking at things that are going on around us, and maybe it's going on for a long time. Well, 2000, uh, 2020 has been a year we'd like to all wipe off the map, but maybe your sea of uncertainty has gone far prior, before, long before that. And we ask a logical question, God, what's next? And yet even as we ask that, we know that irrefutable truth, God is faithful. God is faithful. And because he is faithful, there are three things I really want you to hear this morning. The first is this. Because God is faithful, God is in control. God is in control. There's nothing that throws him a curve. Now, God doesn't cause everything that happens to us, and he's given us the right for, for free will and to make decisions on our own, but there's nothing outside the realm of his control. There's nothing he can't use. There's nothing he can't work through. As a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul himself, I'm sure, as he was sitting in that jail cell in, in Caesarea or maybe in, a, in his own house under house arrest or, or even on the, on the island as, as he was shipwrecked, would remember some words that he wrote to the church at Rome where he was now, uh, to the church at Rome, uh, that gave some profound words that were so applicable to, uh, to his life situation at the moment, and it so applies to yours and to mine. Romans chapter 8, one of the greatest chapters written in the whole Bible. Paul would write to the church and, and apply to himself for, and we know, and we know, not just intellectual assent, not just something that somebody's told us or we read in a book, but we know beyond a shadow of a doubt, right to the core of our being, to our gut, if we would, that absolutely know that in all things, not just some things, not just good, not just bad, not just a few things that come our way, but in all things, even the worst of times, in all things, God works together for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. Amen? God's not caught off guard this morning. God knows what's going on in your heart and life. And in all things, no matter what, good, bad, and different, God is there. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. God is faithful. 
You know, Paul had planned, as I mentioned a moment ago, to go to Rome. It was in his, in his, in his master plan, if you would. And Paul got there, but not in the way that he expected. God brought him in a way that was totally something he would have never foreseen. But through all of this, God was in control. And God worked in all things. Even in, because he served and we serve this sovereign God that is all authority, all powerful, all wise, is never caught off guard. God is faithful. God is there. God's got this. He's in control. You know, in Paul's situation, as we can look in our own life, how we'll be able to look back one of these days and see how God's worked in particular situations that we've struggled through in his life. As he sat in that jail cell in Caesarea, as he was on the island, as he sat in that jail cell in Caesarea, I should say, he won favor with the guards and won many of them to Christ. As he sat on that island shipwrecked with his crew, he won the favor and the confidence and became a counselor to his crew. As he went to, as he went to, to Rome under house arrest, not allowing to leave, he was allowed to preach unimpeded in some of the greatest books in the New Testament were written to that during that two-year period of time, God's got this. God's in control. And as he wrote from his house, in prison really, because he couldn't leave even though it was, he was under house arrest, he wrote these words. Listen to this. For you can say the same. Even in these circumstances, Paul would write to the church at Philippi in the Philippian letter, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say Rejoice. Let your, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, in prayer and in petition and thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all human understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. God's in control. And for you and, and me, God will work through the good for his glory and your good, and he will work in and through all things. The cancer may have come back. The marriage may be shattered. Your security may be down to tubes in some ways. But God's there. God's there. He's faithful. He's faithful even in your painful past and mine. Paul, as he would write these words, knew that he knew rejection. He knew betrayal. He'd been betrayed by his own people, the Romans, the Jews and the Romans. And yet he knew that in all things God was there. You may be experiencing betrayal this morning. Even by one who's been the closest to you. But no, even in that, God's in control. He's got you. I love Chuck Swindoll's statement that said, the Holy Spirit who knows the, so well the contents of our hearts can transform even scar tissue into the muscle of faith. God is faithful. God is in control. Find hope, find courage in that. God's faithful. And because God is faithful, not only is he in control, God is for you. God is for you. Again, Paul's words from Romans 8, what shall we say then in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for us, who can be against us? Paul experienced opposition like few of us will ever know, and yet God was always with him. God was always for him. God was always with him, and the devil would love to just put us in these tough seasons of our life in a, in a, in a situation where we feel all alone, where we're, where we're succumbing to opposition and things just coming against us, and who in the world cares for me in this moment? But God is for you. He'll never abandon you. He'll never forsake you. He's never a fickle friend. You can place your ultimate confidence in him because the God who's in control is also for you because he is faithful. Draw hope and strength in that this morning, my friends. And because God is faithful, know this. He will never stop loving you. He will never stop loving you. He'll always love you. You know, uncertainty breeds many things, but among them, our fear and loneliness. Sometimes we just feel like we're out there all alone. But you know what? God always loves you. 
no matter what, through the tough times, through the good times, for the times when you've brought him joy, for the times, even in the times that you grieved his heart, he will always love you, and he will always provide for you a way to come to him. Come unto me, all of you who are weary and heavy laden, the Bible tells us, and I will give you rest. The God who is faithful loves you no matter what. Know that this morning. His love is never tentative. His love is never conditional. His love is never earned based. No. These words from Paul ring so true this morning. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or sword? No. In all of these things, all things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And I'm convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor demons, nor the present, nor the future, nor any powers, nor COVID, nor elections, nor economy, nor brokenness, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Affirm that this morning with an amen. God loves you. God will always love you. And remember the greatest, some of the sweetest words ever written. Jesus loves me. This I no, for the Bible tells me so. God will never stop loving you. He is faithful, even in the toughest of seasons. Several years ago, my family, my immediate family actually, went through just a terrible time of crisis. Something that just hit us like, like a sledgehammer up inside the head. And Shirley and I were just totally devastated. I want to sidebar here for a second. This is why you need to be praying for your pastors and their families. Even pastors have difficult situations in their families. We don't all have it all together. We need your prayers. Pray for them every day. But at any rate, this issue that slammed us, Shirley and I were totally broken. As a matter of fact, if I'm honest with you, and even just thinking about this many years later, it just brings up, stirs up an emotion. I don't remember a time when I've cried so hard my life. It was tough. And as it was kind of breaking and unfolding, a couple days later, Shirley and I went to a Sunday school class party, like a community group gathering type of thing. And it was a great time together. It was kind of needed, just time of, of, uh, of friendship. And nobody knew what was taking place in our lives. And, and they didn't need to. It wasn't appropriate for that moment. But how God works and how God speaks at just the right moment, just the right second, if you would, because he's in control, he's faithful. He knows, he loves us. The gal who she and her husband were, were hosting the, the evening got up and said, you know what, I, I, I sometimes just wanna share with you. I wanna read you something that I ran across a, a couple of days ago that just meant so much to me and maybe it'll mean something to you. Oh, little did she know. And perhaps these words may speak to you as well. You may wanna affirm this with an amen or whatever. But she said, she wrote, read this, when times, when, excuse me, when everything seems uncertain, the Bible will still have all of the answers. Prayer will still be the most powerful force on earth. The Holy Spirit will still move. He will still honor the praises of his people. There will still be God-anointed preaching. God will still pour out his blessings upon his people. There will still be room at the cross. Jesus will still love you. And Jesus will still, still come to seek and to save those who are lost when they come to him. And he will still keep this promise always when he said, and surely I am with you always, even until the end of the age. Amen? So today, things may not be working out in your life as you'd hoped. Certainly in this season we're living as a, as a nation, as a people, it's not what we would have thought or planned. But be assured this day. Be confident. Find hope. Rest in hope. Don't be filled with dread. Look for what, how, how God is working even at this point in our lives, even in this season, how he's working through even these things. Use this season to change you and to draw more close to him and to take on the very likeness of Christ. And one day, you'll be able to look back on this life situation where we are right now and be able to say, look what God did.
in our family, looking back over the, 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 the season that we experienced there, I can look back and say, look how God worked in such amazing ways, how he healed, how he restored, how he directed, how he redirected. And today I can say unequivocally, our family is good because we serve a God who is good. He's faithful. He's faithful. So as the worship team comes, I want you to hold on to this. He is our hope. He is our living hope. So rest in him this day. Give your cares to him this morning. Have faith. Open your heart to him. For he is faithful. And that, my friends, is what we know. But before we leave, um, Let's do some affirmations. So do this with some great feeling, okay? Because we believe this. Respond, say these words back to me, if we would, okay? God is in control. God is for me. God will always, always love me. He is faithful. Go live that truth. Love you guys. Have a great week.